Hello guys, welcome to Photographics Academy. All right, so today in this video, we're going to be learning how we created this manipulation from scratch to finish. So all we'll be doing is that we're going to be creating it live on this video while we are making references to this one so that we'll make sure we get the exact duplicate of what we have here on this one. And the most beautiful part of it is that you are getting this background for free to also try it out on your own images and see how that works out for you. Okay, so that was see your time. Let's quickly get started. Of course, the first step is to cut out this image from this background and have it on a separate background. So I'm just going to, on a separate layer, sorry. So I'm just going to make a selection of my subject and wait for it. Yeah, once that is done, go to your selecting verse and start modifying your selection. Very, very important. So I'm just going to modify my selections. Make sure that I have everything out. Here. I'll put this area as well. Add here. Do the same thing to this part. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here to make sure it's not on. Flex. And also modify these areas. So just take your time and get this selection right. So I'm just going to fast forward mine. See you when I'm done with the selection. All right. So I'm done. This is mine here. Let me show you. So I have my object on a separate layer right now. So the first thing we're going to do is to make sure your object is above your background okay so we'll have that done the next thing we are going to be doing is to make sure that we clean up this background and to do that just make a selection of the background that's reload the selection go to filter go to blur Gaussian blur and just smoothen it out like that press ok press ctrl d so we'll have a clean background now so the next thing is to get our background in here so i'm just going to drag the background and drop it over the image and scale it in until it fits to the exact point I want it to be. So I want it to be somewhere around here. Of course, if we start put, putting in everything, it's going to look very, very unrealistic. That is why we are doing it like this. So the question is, if she's supposed, if she's to be here in real life, where is she going to be? That is the essence of everything we are doing. So if we just get the exact place that she's meant to be, if she's to be in this particular position in real life, if she's sitting there, where is she going to be located at? That is what we are trying to do. All right, so I think I got it where I would want to be. I'll press OK and check it out. Because I still feel she's slightly taller. This lounge is supposed to be here. Yeah. Something like that. Let's try our skin with being able to be. Just like that. Okay, bringing this in here. You to press K. So I think I like it where it is right now. Where's the blue hub? Our stuff here. Okay. So let's try and make it fit in and look exactly like that one. Remember, we said we are referencing that. So we have this here. Look here down. See? Box tick. Press enter. Let's see how that works. Oh, nice. We'll have it. All right. So the next thing we are going to be doing is to change the blend mode to overlay. Very important. So you notice that the moment we change to overlay, it started blending in. Now we can even restore shadows back. It started blending in. But the problem is that here is becoming too exposed. I don't like the way here is looking. It's beginning to take away the attention from her face down to this place. And we need to fix that. To fix that, we'll duplicate the background and change the duplicated one to normal. So once we change it to normal, we have it looking exactly like it was before. Now we can use a mask and just clean out some areas because we need to darken that area out. Just like this. Remember, this is the only place we want to work on. So we just have to minus these areas from the mask. Excuse me. I'm no longer touching the floor. Hold on. So. Now we have here selected, we can now reduce the brightness of that area using our pulse. So you notice that is the only area that is going down. So we'll have that done. Now, once you have that, we can now 
start creating depth for the image. I guess we'll have depth here. Let me confirm. Yes. So we can now start creating depth for the background. So the first thing we're going to do is go to filter, go to blur that I go to tilt blur. So the reason I'm using tilt blur is so that we'll have something that looks realistic. I wouldn't want to blur the whole area, which is the floor, the background and all of that. I just want to blur out all the areas behind her. That is why I'm using my tilt blur so that the, the blurring can be targeted. So once we do that, we are going to increase our blur. Do not blur it out so much that you're no longer seeing any details on the background. Just blur it out enough to make sure that you have attention. That's the, the sharpness on the object. So we'll have that done. Make sure your floor is not also blurred out. Press OK. So we'll have this area blurred out. But if you notice, here is also remaining sharp. Why? Because this particular area is now in a separate layer. So we'll have to go and repeat the same thing for that area. Of course, in this one, you can now just use your Prussian blur because we did not uh, leave the floor untouched in this one. So just mimic the same blur we have here until it's looking familiar. Press OK. So we've created the depth we wanted for the background. Now let's check out the next thing we need to do. We need to tone the background to assume the color of the image. And to do that, we're going to uh, create a color balance layer over this, go to color balance. So if you look at the image, it has a lot of magenta to it, unlike what we have on the background. So we just have to kick in some magenta to the background and immediately it starts looking very much alike. So you can as well just decide to warm it up a little and you have it. So this is the before, this is the after, this is the before, this is the after. Now let's restore our original shadow. So we'll just go back to the original background press our mask yeah press our mask go to your brush and just restore the shadows where you want them to be so you can be doing the before and after to see exactly where the shadows are falling beautiful now looking at the image i see that the lamp behind her is pretty some light here and i want that light to become a bit stronger so to make it a bit stronger i'm just going to go to my gradient change it to radial drag it all the way up and reduce the effect just a little reduce the scale change the color to something warm and actually just sample any of the colors in the lamp right there just to make sure it's still looking the same now you can change the blend mode to any blend mode that kicks in that luminosity to see that the before the after of course this is too much so we we'll just need to reduce we can now open it up and just you know, move it around to get something even more dramatic and more illuminated. Press OK. And this is still looking too much. Let's just kill it down a little, the before, the after. So to even make things a bit more interesting, we can even decide to reduce the overall brightness on the background. The overall brightness on the background. So we can just come over to this place, onto the curves, just drop it down. Press you don't need to press Ctrl I, but you can as well just use Ctrl I to paint it into the places you want it to be. So I want all these areas to have that darkness, except this area, which the lamp, the lamp also needs to spill on. So we just need to leave that area out. Yeah. And some bits, some areas behind her. But you can leave this area because this is where the light is falling. So to make this look a bit more realistic, it needs to look, has have the color of the lamp. So we'll just add a little red to it. Just slightly. Then also go to the greens and minus to get magenta. Beautiful. All right. So we'll have the before, we'll have the after. I do not want it all on the lamp. So I'm going to reduce the flow and minus it from the lamp a little. Just like that and dab it in as well. All right, so now if you look at this image, you're going to notice that we'll have something on the floor that looks like a lamp stand. Just to have a little bit of light in it. The whole idea is just to give it that dent. You can decide to leave your own like this. You can decide to add it. But if you want to add it, let me show you how we added it. So it's, we are using the same background, but now we are putting it on a separate document so that we can just take one of the lamps here 
So to do that, I'm just going to go to my object selection and hold back over this area when this finish loading. So by then it will start identifying the objects in the scene. So they just allow the object finder to do its job. So I feel that it's taking time. We'll just use our lasso tool and um, make that selection ourselves. This is the exact one we used. So we'll just go around it. Okay, so we'll have our selection. Now we can even put it on a different layer. We can put it on a different layer, Ctrl J. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, that works. So I'll just move it straight to my document. Place it over here. Scale it up a little. Bring it down all the way down. Just drop it there. Press OK. So now it's looking too dark for that particular area. So we can as well brighten it. I think it's too good. We'll just add a little light to it. Just slightly. Like that. Beautiful. Now we need to create a luminosity for it. Since it, it's a lamp, it needs to has effect on some area. So to do that, I'm going to go to our gradient one more time, pick up your radial, reduce the scale, make it small, bring it down to the lamp, make sure the scale is as small as the light source itself, put it inside the lamp. So of course it has to be warm. So we'll just pick a very warm color, something like that. Do the same thing over here. If this one will work here. Press enter. So the idea is to make sure it's within the lamp inside here and change the blend mode to something that we allow the light flow out. Okay, I think I like this linear dodge, just reduce it. So when you look now, you are seeing the effect of the light. So you can even decide to spill it on the object, but because it's not a very big light source. We don't need to spill it on the object. It can just be illuminating the floor where it is standing. All right. So this is the before, this is the after. This is the before, this is the after. One more thing I would like to do is to color grade my image. So if you look here, you notice that the image has a very warm tone to it and a little touch of magenta. And how we achieve that is that we use a Gradient. Okay, so this is for the background. I'm trying to find the exact place we color graded. Okay, so we use a gradient map. Use a gradient map for that. Let's just locate it where it is. All right, so this is the gradient map we used for the skin. So we can as well just copy the gradient map and map it on the skin. Let me show you exactly the gradient map we used. This is this that gradient map. And because I want to achieve a uniform result, I'm just going to copy. But you can look at it. And of course, you are getting the PSD file. So you can also move it and drop it on your own and see how it works for you. So I'm just going to move the gradient map, place it over my object. But the only challenge with this one is that there is a mask on it. And because there is a mask on it, it's going to be everywhere. And it's obviously not going to be on my object because the scaling is not going to be the same thing. So to Put the mask back. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to delete this one, then create another mask for it. Go to my uh, select. Of course, this has to be above here. Yeah, this has to be above here because we are applying it on our object. So you can as well just turn everything off and just use your uh, selective. You can use your color. What's it called? Your color range. So to use your color range, I'm going to hide this, make a duplicate of my object. Create a mask for it, go to select, go to color range. Now we will be able to separate the skin from every other part of the image, excluding the background. That is why we have to make a duplicate and make the mask on the object. We can as well decide to remove it from the chair now, but I think that is going to make the whole thing look messy. So we'll just use our brush and modify that. Now, if you look, the thing is just on the skin. I said that it's spilling on some areas who do not want it, which includes the chair. So we'll just use our brush and remove it from those areas, just like this. I think I also want it on the hair because it's more like the same color. So we'll just leave the same feel uh, at the same number, 60. If you feel it's too much, you can as well just reduce. Now let's take care of that chair. Let's take care of that chair. So we'll just make a selection of the chair like this. Minus the hair. Go to your black and white. I prefer doing it this way. So that it still looks quite realistic. 
Now, if you feel like you still need to take care of these debts over here, you can just use your clone stamp or your master tool, just or your pass tool rather, and just remove these areas. Just like this. I do not want to make it pure white because, of course, if it's a chair that is in this kind of scene, it should still have some particles of debt on it to make it look realistic. All right, so have that taken care of. So, finally, we are going to create a global color grading that is going to bring everything together and to create a global color grading i will be using color fill solid color fill over everything come to our solid color just use something warm something very very warm press ok change the blend mode to soft light so the idea is to make sure that everything comes together then i'm going to reduce it as much as possible so the final color grading we're going to be adding is our photo filter to cool the stuff down as much as we can yeah so we'll just bring it down all right so this is the reference this is the result let me show you again this is the reference this is the result okay so at this point i feel we need to make adjustment to our background over here just need to bring this one a bit lower yeah. like this bring it a bit lower like this just like that, we can as well use our mask to reveal some part of the pot as well. Just like this. Works a four. Okay, so we are beginning to get these areas to be highlighted again. So, of course, we need it, we need it dark. We're going to make a duplicate of the background again. Control J. Take it all the way up here. And also create a mask for it like that and paint it change the blend mode to normal first of all and still paint it over the pot very important paint it over the pot just the pot like this and darken it down bring it down good and any other area you feel that needs also to be slightly dark just paint it over make sure it's not getting to this area because we're going to be messing it up. So if you notice, we're just in car lapping our background and our layers to get the exact result that we want. Beautiful. So this is the reference. This is the result. This is the reference. This is the result. This is the reference. This is the result. So all we need to do now is just make some little adjustments to the whole color grading and we are having a uniform result. Thank you for watching this amazing video. Make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and make sure you turn on the notification bell when you do so to get notified every single time we drop a new video. If you have any question or sending this, go to the comment section, drop your question, and we will make sure that we answer you or even suggest a video that you want us to do on a particular topic that you are finding difficult and we'll make sure we we'll record a video that suits your very, very need. In that way, we'll be able to serve you better and be able to give you informations that are relevant and needed for your growth. Thank you one more time for watching this amazing video. Make sure you download your PSD file so that you can as well practice along as you watch the video. See you on the next one. Thank you.